Welcome to our lecture online. To get a better feel for what hyperbolic functions are, let's explore this concept right here. We know that the hyperbolic functions use a variable, let's say t or x or whatever letter you want to use. Quite often we use the letter x, but since we started using the letter t, we'll keep that going for a while. And we know that the function is defined by plugging in different values for t, and those values can be anywhere from 0 to infinity. And so we can find appropriate values for the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine, as well as for the other hyperbolic functions. And again, we know that t is related to the area here in this drawing right here. We can say that t is equal to twice that area. But right now, we're not yet know, we don't yet know how to find that area, and we'll leave that to a later time. But let's say now that we want to find the value of the hyperbolic sine and cosine when that angle goes to zero. Now we know that when the angle goes to zero, the area in here goes to zero as well. And what does that mean for the hyperbolic sine and cosine? Well, you can see that if the area goes to zero, you'll be at this point right here. The hyperbolic cosine should be equal to one and the hyperbolic sine should be equal to zero. Let's see if that works out with our definitions for the hyperbolic sine and cosine. So we're going to plug in 0 for t for the hyperbolic cosine and 0 for t for the hyperbolic sine to see if we do indeed get those values. So when we plug that into our equation, we can then see that this is equal to e to the 0 plus e to the minus 0, which of course is still e to the 0, divided by 2, which becomes equal to 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 2 divided by 2 or equals to 1. And that's exactly what we expected to find when we plug in 0 for the hyperbolic cosine, we should end up over here, which means that that value is equal to 1. Doing the same for the hyperbolic sine, we can say that this is equal to e to the 0 minus e to the minus 0, which is still e to the 0, divided by 2, which is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 0. And again, that's exactly what we expected when we let the angle go to 0, the area goes to 0, and then we'll be right on the x-axis, so at that point, the y-coordinate will indeed be equal to zero. So that seems to make sense. Now we're going to let the area increase, and then we realize when the angle theta, which is really not something we use in the hyperbolic functions, we don't use angles, we actually use values like t, which represent an area. And so when we let the angle go to 45 degrees, then we realize the area will go to infinity, and we'll show later why that is so, and therefore, if the area goes to infinity, t goes to infinity, because after all, t is equal to twice the area. So, when we plug in the value for t as t goes to infinity, what is the cosh or the hyperbolic cosine, and what is the hyperbolic sine of t? So, let's go ahead and plug in the value infinity and see what we get. So, this becomes e to the infinity plus e to the minus infinity, divided by 2, which essentially is equal to, when we plug that in here, we get infinity, e to infinity, plus 1 over e to infinity, which is infinity, all divided by 2. And of course, 1 divided by infinity is 0, so infinity divided by 2 is still infinity. But in other words, when we plug in t, when t becomes infinite, the hyperbolic cosine becomes infinite as well. And so when we take a look at that, if we go along on this function right here, and we go farther and farther and farther up, eventually in the limit, as the area becomes infinite, the value x along that line here becomes infinite as well, along that curve becomes infinite as well. And if we do the same for the hyperbolic sine, we have e to the infinity minus e to the minus infinity divided by 2, and then notice the only thing that changes here is that this plus becomes a minus, so this plus becomes a minus, but since we're adding or subtracting 1 over infinity, that should not make any difference. So this is equal to infinity minus 1 over infinity divided by 2, which is basically infinity. So as the area goes to infinity, when the area becomes infinite, when t becomes infinite, the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine both go to infinity. In other words, this line here representing the hyperbola here goes on forever and ever and ever in the domain and the range. And so in the limit, yes, those functions do go out to infinity. And in the other limit, when the angle goes to zero and the area goes to zero, x will be one and y will be zero. And so hopefully that gives you a better feel for what those hyperbolic functions are. Later on, we'll also graph them to get a better grasp 
of what they represent. And that's how it's done.